So we have to have a hole in the bottom of the bar here, like a DI2 compatible bar to install this classified junction unit. We're gonna plug it in and then insert into the bar and tuck this wire into the bar and we're gonna mount our control unit, our shifter, up under the bar. John has requested the left side in the bar for the shifter, which makes sense. He's not gonna have a shifter here on the left side, so. Nice. And we're just gonna tape it. Yeah, so we've tightened the shifter into the handlebar end and much like a Shimano DI2 junction, bar and junction for DI2, we're just gonna tape it to the handlebar here. This little adapter right there slots into place on the little shift lever button, sorry, and then we would tape it against the bar. Always pre-cut your electrical tape. Usually this little mount usually have, has like a pre-applied adhesive on it. This one's been installed before. Just like a DI2 sprinter switch. I'm just gonna tape over the edge of it here. And when we do our bar tape, we are going to wrap around it as well. It seems to be a gravel cyclist signature. Some satellite shifters. Love those things. So good. All right, so now we're gonna pair our three axle unit to our handlebar unit. Think of this as our derailleur, that's our shifter. So we're gonna cover, uncover the charging port here. And we hit this button here with our T T5 Torx for five seconds till our light starts blinking. Here we go, and then within 30 seconds, you want to hit your button, is it here, yep. this one? Yep. Hit, hold it for five seconds until they start blinking simultaneously, then release, and then they'll stop blinking in your pair. Then we'll test out our shifter. It looks like we have a signal. Beautiful. We're still on the rear wheel. Right there is a torque arm. You can use spaces if you have to. It depends on your frame. Check out the classified website and directions, etc. Now we're through installing the smart through axle. We've already prepared our axle. Threading actually inserts to the end of the axle here. Uh, depends on what, what frame you have, what kind of thread pitch and length threads you need. But we've already tried to align these. So when we install the lever, it's going to be pointing towards the handlebar. So the two communicate. Perfect. And then test it. We hear shifting. Seems like it's working. And we will set up the rest of the drivetrain and the brakes here in a minute. So I've already pre-measured our hose here for our caliper. I'm just leaving it uninstalled here. These lines are already pre-bled, so I'm gonna try my best to just cut it and then we will attach our caliper. There we go. So a dead brake hose. And then we've got a little barb here. Just gonna press into the end of the hose. Get it in as far as I can. My tool mounted on it. And press it until that barb is flush with the end of the brake hose. Just like that. So our caliper is like pre-filled with fluid, so I'm gonna uncap it. We've already got our olive in the end inside the caliper here. We've got our fixing bolt. Just gonna press it in. 
Might see some fluid come out, so we just want to keep a rag handy. Uh, eight millimeter wrench. And we'll tighten it down. And torque it. A good old break crow's foot. If you remember in our earlier builds, SRAM uses a threaded barb and then same type of system. You gotta torque it down. SRAM's torque spec seems crazy high at eight newton meters. Considering Campagnolo and Shimano. Call for five to six newton meters. Campagnolo here calls for four. And what I'm just doing here is just confirming that my olive is compressed. So we don't want, what we don't want to do is set up the brake and then squeeze that lever and then get brake fluid everywhere. Look at that olive, it's perfect. We'll reconnect it and torque it back down. And then we'll set up the brakes and bleed them and get this bike ready to roll. I'm gonna attach our brake bolts. We already measured these bolts. We've got a 30 millimeter chain stay here. I'm just going to secure it to the caliper. Not worried about alignment, but we're going to press these pads back in, start the bleed procedure. And just cut our hose. Install the barb. Same process as the re brake. Bronze is what? Oh, it's back. Remove the bleed screw. We've got our lever syringe. It's just got a little port on it there. I'm gonna leave it plugged open so there's a hole open there. And then we're gonna suck this thing full of fluid. And we're gonna try not to make a mess. So I don't like to clean up. Cap that. Right, so we already removed the bleed screw. Thread this little guy in. Until it stops. I'm gonna open it. Just a quarter of a turn. Now we're gonna open up our lever port. All bleed port screw here. We're going to insert our lever syringe. Got a little open port up here. And then I'm just going to preferably not push little air bubbles into the system. Use the hose a bit, get those bubbles out of there. leaving the system. Pushing the fluid up to the lever and then I'm gonna suck it back into caliper and pull up on the caliper pulling air out of the system from the bottom end, so through the caliper. Mm -hmm. Did enough pushing and pulling this lever here. I feel like we got plenty of air bubbles out of the system. We're gonna close the port just by screwing this bleed port screw here. Thread our caliper lever syringe. And kind of wick away some of the fluid in here and reinstall a bleed port screw. Just a two and a half millimeter Allen key. and an eight mil for the 
No, there. And then repeat the process for the front brake. So now with the syringe attached to the lever, I'm just gonna tap it a few times, just like our other brake systems. We've got the other end closed, so this is acting like it's an open system still, but got a nice firm lever. And I'm not seeing any air bubbles come out here, out of the top here. So I think we're done. What I'm gonna do is cover this hole with my thumb. And I'm gonna unthread the bleed port. And I'm gonna make sure I don't get fluid over here all over the lever. Or you want uh, another, maybe a tune on that too? Yeah, probably just let them call me on this and tell me how much it's gonna cost to fix it. Cool. All right. Snug up that bleed port fitting. Before we do anything on it? Yeah, just, yeah. Wipe the mineral oil. I just don't know who's gonna really know what I want to fix. This one's, I'm sure. sure. This one's just purely to kick around. I'm gonna spray it with some alcohol. Get that lever cleaned up. Our lockout here. Probably gonna insert this can't be barrel adjuster on here. Always have well we have a barrel adjuster here too, but we need to add a little bit of housing length. This was the stock housing length. Ferrell on one end. So, we got our Cape One housing attached here. Lock out for rear shock. Easiest to do it with the shock removed. As in most like mountain bikes that have rear lockouts. It's Feed the cable through. Comes out the other end. And we've got our little pinch bolt, which I accidentally removed. So Pete here is now installing the chain after sizing appropriately. So you're off the, we're on the bottom. Quick link time. Pro tip. Less tension. Oh, you have the special tool. Nice. You could just snap it. Chain up over the top side. Yep. Snap it in place. Now comes the fun part to figure out the shifting. So this cassette is Shimano spaced with a Campy 12. Could be interesting. All right, so I'm screwing the B-tension screw in. It's, it was set so low that it, actually the okay. cage here is hitting the chainstay, so it's brand new out of the box. We haven't set our limits yet, so I'm just gonna manually check to see how our high and low limit work. High seems to be pretty good in the back end, but there's no hesitation falling into it. And we'll check our low limit. Campy's moved to the two millimeter Allen keys too. send this fancy derailleur into this wheel. That would be very, very bad. Very naughty. Tight enough. I'm not gonna loosen our cable. We're shifting it. Go up the cassette. Look, our cable tension's already pretty good. The only spot. It's like it's like maybe the chain line's too wide for the cage there. Oh, 
Wallace. Now we're shifting to classified. Easy gear. Big gear. That's, that's pretty dope. You really have to feel it for yourself, but it's a noticeable difference in the gear ratio being triggered by the classified system. Very cool stuff. Okay, Trendsetter, so that's it. The build videos for the long-awaited 9MCR9RDO project bike with classified drivetrain, capping all our parts, FSA, full speed ahead, and the Narwolf by Wolf Tooth. Peter, mate, thanks for your help, invaluable help. Pete is one of the owners of Brickyard Bike Company who have done several builds for me now. This is their second store here in Dothan, Alabama. So if you're in the area, check them out. And also their original location in Phoenix City, Alabama, just across the river from Columbus, Georgia. As always, thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the Gravel Cyclist YouTube channel for interesting content such as this. No bull gravel bike reviews, other product reviews, ride experience videos and general madness. Really? Yeah. Sn snapping at me? That's a bit rude. Tuesday? You naughty girl. I expect manners please. Haha, <laughs> as all of it is released to the channel. I'll see you. Pete, I'll probably see you, right? Yeah, that's right. And these are some customers. Hello, I'll see you guys in the next video.